look at what's, uh, what the reset is in this ball game. Our score, Oklahoma leads Texas A&M by three. The Sooners with a full timeout at 3.30. Texas A&M is down to its final 30-second timeout. Oklahoma has already reached the 10-foul limit. A&M shoots two from here on out. The next whistle on Texas A&M sends the Sooners to the line to shoot two. Melvin Watkins will be over there drawing up a way to get the ball up the floor as quickly as possible. If I'm Kelvin Sampson, I sure consider the option of denying the ball to Bradley Jackson if these free throws are made. You can deny the ball, make somebody else bring it up the floor, and that will completely destroy any play that Melvin Watkins would have designed. But you've got to make the free throws first. Oklahoma, the fourth-ranked team in the country. Texas A&M trying to win number 10 on the year. There has been Aggie magic in this building going back to the 99-2000 campaign. The Oklahoma State Cowboys came into town, ranked 12th in the country, and A&M won that one 64-59. Aaron McGee, a 79% free throw shooter, 5 for 6 from the line this afternoon. The senior calmly drains the front end. Huge. Two possession game now. Huge. It's in both. Still a two possession game. Sooners will force the Aggies to use some clock. Ten second differential between the shot and the game clock. Scott, three for three comes up short, then the rebound to Jabari Brown. Gets it to Qantas White. Qantas is in traffic. And a timeout is called. No. What'd they call? Out of bounds? It's Oklahoma basketball. He called ugly. <laughs> Blue's whistle said ugly. Let's take it out of bounds, see if we can start over. But Jabari Brown may have a timeout. But in any event, it's Oklahoma basketball. Unless they're saying that one of the A&M players was on the end line when he touched the basketball, and now Oklahoma uses a timeout. That stops the clock with 30 seconds to play in the game and a five-point Oklahoma advantage. And Kelvin Sampson now goes to work on the grease board. And look at the numbers for Kelvin Sampson against the state of Texas in Big 12 Conference play. 45 and 9. That's ridiculous. I mean, take that outside of Big 12 play against the state of Texas in total, and his record goes to 59 and 9. Talk about owning something. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, though, he may own the state of Texas, but he's gotten all he's wanted from these Texas Aggies here this afternoon. The Melvin Watkins has got to be extremely pleased. There are no moral victories, but I tell you what, this is a moral victory. Don't tell Melvin I said that, but his team and his kids have played about as well as they can play. And, and you look at this Texas A&M club, and you and I have done their games over the last couple of seasons, but it always seems like they're missing that one piece of the puzzle. They need a point guard. They had Clifton Cook for one year, and, and he was ineligible. But they just have not been able to find all the pieces at once that could bring this program into the upper echelon of the Big 12. The Oklahoma pass, pass, pass. And now it's a chase game for Texas A&M. Juanis White, Bernard King has four personal fouls, and he says, I can't foul, I can't foul. At this point in the ball game, if you're Bernard King, you gotta give up that foul Absolutely. and stop the clock. Absolutely, you can't stand there with your hands on your hips asking a teammate to run up and create the foul, even though he's right. He is their best chance to create a three-point shot, but still, I agree with you, Bill, he's gotta go ahead and take that foul for the team. Jason Dietrich to the line. For today's first attempts. And this is the story of the day yeah. for Oklahoma foul shooting. 18 of 20. Foul shooting will win you basketball games. 18 of 20 will win you games in any arena in America. Still a few possession game, but the Aggies need a couple of threes and they need them in a hurry. They'll allow that. Bradley Jackson is able to get the shot to fall and it's going to be a three-point play opportunity. Oh my goodness. Look how far under the basket Jason Dietrich is. He's all the way, I think he was under the backboard on that play. 
that's exactly what Oklahoma was going to allow them to do. Go ahead, get the two. But don't foul him. But now Bradley Jackson has to connect here. He's five of seven from the stripe. He has 12 points in the game. So it's been a good day for the junior from Inglewood, California. A great day now. Yeah, that's right. A terrific day. Averages only five points a game for the season. Bradley Jackson has had a terrific afternoon. And here's Tomas Ress. He's in there to run around and try and track down Aaron McGee, but he's also one of the best three-point shooters for this club. And a foul is called on Andy Leatherman, who came in. If Andy Leatherman would have fallen backwards, he might have gotten a charge. He tried to draw a charge off of Hollis Price, saying he pushed him, but he fell forwards. Rarely will you get a foul called when you fall forward. Look at him. He turned. Well, I don't know. Maybe he did hit butt first. That was a pretty good attempt right there. Good idea. Drawn up by Melvin Watkins. And now Bernard King, who checked out for defensive purposes, will come back in for offensive purposes. Bill, how valuable were those 25 seconds that Oklahoma ran off the clock? How valuable is that time now? seconds to play and Hollis Price misses the first of two. These are his first attempt. This would make it a two possession game and he does. 68-64. and has got to get up there in a hurry. Bernard King for three. That's off the mark. And the rebound to Price. Two seconds. One second. And that's how this one is going to come to an end. No moral victories, you said, but a valiant effort for Texas A&M today as they fall to Oklahoma 68-64. For Reed Geddes, I'm Bill Dolman. Thanks for joining us in College Station. Now to Studio 66 in Doug Bell. All right, Bill, thank you very much. Let's check in now for the final seconds of Nebraska against Kansas State. Fred White, Paul Splitworth in Lincoln. Thank you, Doug Bell. We're about to close this one out. Matt Seabrand misses a shot. We have 26 seconds left in this game. Nebraska will go to the free throw line, leading by 15 points here, 97-82. Barry Collier has seen his team take command late in the first half of this ball game and just really steadily build the lead to a 21-point margin at one point. Now, Jake Milhuizen, who's had a great day, back on the line for Nebraska. 19 points for the freshman today. Make it 20 is the rear high. Substitution for Nebraska now. Don Hymas comes into the ball game. Wilson Thomas will come out, the football player, with a career high eight points for Nebraska today. Now they're going to get Kedrick Ford back in the game. He's been injured and hasn't played for a while. Bill Heisen just almost automatic. is 21 points on the game today. John Robinson. Adam Bohack is going to see some playing time here today. Good win for Nebraska here this afternoon. They got Missouri coming in on Wednesday. They opened the season with a game that they played pretty well down in Columbia, but, but lost to the Tigers. Rematch time in conference play. Kansas State wanting to just play it out now. Seven seconds left in the game. They're willing to just play it out. 99-82 Huskers. Matt Sebrand going to the bucket. Go. The basket doesn't count. The shot claim came late. And Nebraska wins at 99-82. Pretty impressive by the Huskers here in Lincoln. They go to four and six in the conference. Kansas State now three and seven. 99-82, Nebraska the final. That's it from Lincoln. Let's get you back to Doug Bell. All right, Fred, thank you. We're getting ready for the top 25 matchup between Kansas and Texas Tech. Kirk Heinrich is getting ready in the fog. Bobby Knight's Red Raiders will be rolling in there momentarily. We'll be back. <laughs> 